Welcome to Factorio True Megabase. My name is Nilaus and this is a highlight of the Twitch series True Megabase. And uh, what I want to showcase for you today is taking a look at what we are looking at here. This is the blue science build and basically using that as the offset to showcase some of the cool things that I've built and mainly looking at the, let's, let's just call it a bit of an overcomplicated train system. Because I think, I think it is, but that's um but i love it that's the part that's the part i'm, I'm so happy about it and uh, it's something that's taken a, quite a while to get up and running but now that it's up and running i am super enthusiastic about it uh, so i want to share it of course and i hope you want to uh, to to join in on this if you want to see more of this uh, let's just uh, say pretty sizable base here then uh, then take a look at uh, come join me on twitch this is streaming on monday with no on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central European time, soon to be uh, Central European summer time, and uh, we have like these builds. So if we just start with a zoom out of just explaining sort of the concept of this base, and then we can uh, we'll go into the details of what I want to show you in is about actually this part the super complicated train system. Well, maybe it's not that complicated. Basically, the idea of this base is that I want eventually, like the very long term goal is to make 1, 1 million science per hour. So that's 16,667 science per minute, or 278 science per second. That's quite a lot. So what I've done is uh, I well, basically the premise is I want to make sure that everything I build is really optimized for updates. So I want to have as few entities as possible. That means a few uh, half full belts. That means actually as few belts as possible. I don't mind having lots of trains, but the trains will have to be idle most of the time so they don't root around. And that's what we are building here. So we have like dedicated, completely isolated systems here for red signs and over here for green signs. And each of those is producing half a million signs per hour. So the idea is that when I build all of this for all of it, then I just double it. Yeah, let's see about that. But this is this is definitely um, uh, it's definitely cool. And then from red and green, those are easy. We get into the science here. Those are still the easy ones. And then from there, it comes the difficult part, and that's going to be how the hell are we going to do the blue science? Because blue science, then you need red circuits and you need sulfur, and you need a lot more things. Also steel as well. So it gets that gets quite a step up on the complexity. And that's where really what I've been working on for the last, well, honestly, couple of weeks on stream to get this operational. But man, does it look awesome. So let's uh, talk about the train system. How does the train system actually work? Well, uh, it again, one of the key parameters is there will be no crossing trains, no exception. The big trains here, they will never cross path. That's just the parameter I set because I don't like having these very long trains intersect. So the, any intersection here is between my fueling stops. This is a fuel stop, which will fly out here. There's a fuel stop there. There's a fuel stop here. And that goes really, really slowly but because with very few robots because it's just there to refuel all the locations. But the trains themselves go. Let's take this one. We have one system here that is isolated. These are the only things that are available here. These these trains, they can go, if we look at the line here, you can see they can't really see a lot of train other trains look train locations here. And and yeah, so for example, something like sulfur. Sulfur, it can go. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll just actually ride the sulfur train and then see how it goes. Okay, so the sulfur train, let's pretend this one is empty. So what happens is it's a double-headed train, so it's two sixteen two. Then you see another train coming in there. Perfect. And we are going, this is just a small, my fueling train and also my little PAX train. And it goes all the way down here. Again, never crossing any of the other paths. And okay, we kind of are running out here. So I am going here. This one's waiting to be filled up. And the other one should also be pretending to be empty. Then we go into a design here, which is all these designs are train to train. And that's something that I've been so enjoying and maybe you'll enjoy it as well coming on to the stream if you want to do that. That is the part about designing new things. Like I've been playing this game for six thousand, six and a half thousand hours and yet I have new design challenges because now I need to design a way to do from a train, a crude oil train into a sulfur train and try to make it or not try to but actually 
make sure that it is tiling either at one wagon length or two wagon length. It puts in a lot of different conditions, optimizing so that it has the minimum amount of entities moving at any given time and that it has a sufficient throughput to be able to fill up the train and move over there. So this one, for example, is designed towards the full train. We can use our rate calculator. The full train should be delivering. Oh, this would be fun, right? This should be delivering 50 per second and it's delivering 53.0 per second. So I'm happy this is delivering more than it should per second. And then there's the train line that goes from here all the way over. In this case, it just goes in and out and there's always gonna be one loading and there's always gonna be, or well, maybe they will all eventually stack up here. One, two, three, four, stack, well, no, one in there and then one, two, three behind when they're all full. But they could also be the fact that it's, uh, it's just going in here. So there's no, no selection because there's only one train. But when it gets a bit bigger, well, let's, before we go a bit bigger than this, we can actually take a look at this one. This is where it gets a bit more complicated because there are three different scenarios you can say one the first one the one we just looked at where we have a single location a single train line here that has a single uh, a single input or a single train here and this case it's just loading this case it's just unloading that's it the next tier is actually this one where it has a single train line but this train line has a station up here for this train coming from south and the train station here, the train coming from the north. And uh, there's some logic governing that. We can go through that as well. And then there is the third option and that's the most complicated. We'll just uh, run over and take a look at that one. Let me see. I think this one can actually emphasize that. That is the, uh, not necessarily more complicated, but actually, uh, just well, actually, let's go up here. Take the most advanced one so I can I know what to go through afterwards. Oops, hello train. Here, this is more complicated because not only is it governed by multiple trains. Here's a here's two trains coming in. Both you can see over on the right hand side. Both the green circuits and the plastic are coming in on this one. So it has to figure out. But not only that, but there are also multiple locations each of them can go in. So the train has to figure out which of these unloading stations it's actually going to. And uh, why is this one not working? Oh, it's not working because it's already full. It's completely saturated. That is excellent, but these are still working. So that's uh, the three iterations that we're going to go through. We're going to start with the easy one and I'm just running on track. So let's hope nothing goes wrong. What could possibly go wrong by running on track? So you can see here, I've put up a massive buffer on all of these. We're still going to look, look at this one. This is very, very simple. It's just single train line in, single station, always active. Super simple. Next one. This one, two trains coming in. The, oh, by the way, by the way, I should stop here and ask you a question that I really want an answer for. So since I have completely fallen in love with the idea of doing trains to trains, I just feel that it would be awesome to do, uh, to do some masterclass videos on this topic and I could maybe do like the first six seven masterclass videos on this however I don't know if I'm the only one who is so in love with train to trains and I might actually be that there might be a few other people but I feel it's such a niche thing that's less than one percent of people do that so on the one hand it could be start spreading the news about this wondrous way of building factories on the other hand it could be something where you go like well it's kind of interesting to see one but yeah I don't want to see all of them because I'm never going to build it that way although you should. So let me know in the comment section if you think that masterclasses on such a, well, a master level topic is uh, relevant and interesting that you would uh, perhaps watch that because I would love to make it. Uh, but on the other hand, it's also going to be like an absurd amount of time for making uh, lots of videos if no one really wants to watch beyond the first one. Anyway, so this one, we're going to be explaining it just in a bit of detail. And I think that if you feel like, haven't I described this before? Yeah, kind of ish, maybe in something else, but it is so important and it is, uh, it's, it's a bit complicated. So it just bears mentioning one more time. The first thing we want to do when we have a train station at the top and at the bottom is to make sure that the trains, two things, there are two conditions, only come in when there is a need. Second, comes in, when one is in, the other one can't go, right? So they have to block each other. 
not that it, I mean, it, it's gonna happen by itself because they can't get in here because there's kind of another train in the way. So this, uh, this signals would control that anyway, but I want to make sure that as soon as one train is allocated, then the other one does not get there. I do this with uh, with this logic here. You can see there are lots and lots of wires here. Basically what I do is I summarize all of the stuff in here in all the boxes and in that I put it in here. So we can now see there's 78,000 and 30,000. That seems like good numbers. What I'm basically saying is the plastic train is allowed to come in here because that's the output when there is at least 64,000 available. So this one is now open to it has a little train number one, that's why, how it's open. It is now open to plastic trains. So if any plastic trains wants to come in here, by all means, get in here. The second condition is when the coal is less than 25,000, then you open it for the coal train. So that means this one actually has now a limit of zero because that is now for all intents and purposes closed. You can see it's blue and this one's open. So that means if we start demanding additional plastic is that I wonder if that try is, oh, that's a green circuit one. Uh, let's look at this one. If this is going, no, it doesn't have these. The way I have these, these uh, views up here, this first signal is indicating, is it, is it open? Uh, or is it possible to send a train in? Then the second one, is it allowed to send a train in? And then the third one is, is there actually a train assigned? Those are the three indicators. The first one is just looking at the value here. Is it less than 25,000 or yeah, less than 25,000, then you're allowed to get in here. Secondly, the, this one is monitoring the other one. This one now has an R. Why does it have an R? At that, at, now I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering if that's the right one. Uh, this one has a C. I'm just wondering if I just did a, I think it should be a P though. Yeah, it should be a P. <laughs> Weird. Weird, 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 weird. And that one, yeah. So this C, we'll look into this way and fix the other one. This C is like basically monitoring. Here we have the output value, the output signal, which is actually the train count. So it basically says if there is a train allocated, not just necessarily waiting at this one, but allocated to this location, then it will send a signal P and that signal P is actually supposed to go up here. Funny how we just find a mistake here. Um, yeah, so that P is now blocking the signal from going in. So it would actually always be open. What I'd really like to see is actually a train coming in here. Uh, so this is the second one. And basically by going through this one, this is filtering, it's basically saying if there is a P signal, that is if there is a plastic train assigned, then close the copper station and likewise the other way around. So let's jump to the third more and more complex build that is going to be for the red circuits. Of course, it's going to be the red circuits. And we're going to do that here. Oh, there is a, a train going. Oh, I just, why is it only on the tracks that I can run here? All right, so let's have a look at all of these and not a single light is on. That is such a shame. Huh, I was kind of hoping there would be um, at least some trains, something that would be enabled Basically, let's uh, walk through it and then keep an, a, a vigilant eye on whether it is. The reason why this is actually, this is this is okay. Actually, it could also be, that would also be okay. I think I'm actually just taking these ones. I have too, have too many of these. I think so. Yeah. There. And so each one of these is monitoring how much, if there's less than 100,000 green circuits or 50,000 plastic because green circuit stacks twice as high, then it will open the station. You can see here, there's definitely not going to be the green one that opens. Let's look at this one. This is now way lower. Oh, look at that. We got a plastic train inbound. That is awesome. So the plastic train now comes in here. And what happens is the plastic train unloads, unload loads in here. This one is easily fast enough. And then it goes into a location here. So it keeps the copper coming in this is also important that these two are next to each other so that they can go in here actually and i think that might be something we sh we could potentially risk is that are these two always loading at at the same space are these two here loading at the same at the same time i don't 
100% can guarantee that. Those are the kind of marginal edge cases that are super important. But you can see here, this one's just unloading. And since it is 64,000, and one of these trains is, what is it, 4,000 in one of these, and there's only one inserter to do that, then it's going to take a while. And the trains are basically, all train operations here are going to be pretty slow. Okay, this is great. I should be seeing some, uh, some plastic build coming out soon. So this one is 31,000. This one is 35,000. I am actually going to look at this one. Uh, so what we have here, you can see now that one has 151,000 red circuits. So this basically says it is allowed. It, it wants to get a red circuit train in, but there is no available red circuit trains because they're all full and waiting to be unloaded. The other one is it is allowed. The reason why it's allowed is because there is nothing on the other lane. We can look at this part up here. Let's go that one. Uh, if we look at this one, there is currently a train going in here. Oh, we are driving back. Let's have a look at this as it goes back. Uh, the pathing path here is also kind of interesting because they're no, not allowed to do any kind of intersection. And now this one goes into the station. And what you will be able to see once it gets going, you can see here, it is. it wants to get a plastic train. It is allowed to, and it does have one. Then we can run up to the other end and then hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we will see that even if this one was possible, then it would be blocked at this one because the P signal is not zero. So this one has input signal, but P is equal to one. Thereby, that, for that reason, there is no output signal. Great. And that means this one still has a value of zero. Working absolutely amazing. What we will see is that this one, because it oh, in this station, we see that the plastic will decrease because it's being loaded on the train, but also the coal is decreasing. You'll see now it's down to 26,000 when it reaches, not 25, but actually 24,000 or 24,999, then it will open for that train. And that's what we really want to see. I wanted to see this case because another issue that you can have potentially is that you want to make sure that this train, the time it takes to load a plastic train and unload a coal train does not sort of take more time than than you need the cycle time to be so if if this one was any faster then i the whole capacity of this network here or this station wouldn't actually work for because i just couldn't load it fast enough on the train the trains are loading excruciatingly slowly but they're loading fast enough and that's the only thing that matters the only thing that matters is that it's fast enough it is like when the whole thing is operational, I think this station is about 80% utilized. I don't actually know exactly, but it does seem likely that it's about about 80% utilized. It's really, really close. So we can see now this the coal has dropped down to 20. It will not run down to zero, but it will run down to 20. What we can see here is the plastic train is open. It says, yes, please give me a station. But, and it also sends like the L outbound, but it is blocked by this one because as long as there is a train here, it's not going to go out. So we will have to wait for this, this train reaches 64,000. When it reaches 64,000, it goes out. And at that point, the coal train will be sent inbound. We are going to take a look at the bottom part because that's where everything will happen. And again, we're just going to look at it. 63, it is at a quite a decent space. So off we go. And now this one no longer sends the P signal. So because there's no p signal the plastic signal this copper actually says does it want to is it allowed to and so it will come in with a plat a cop coal train and this coal train is now containing 30 32 000, yes and that tops it up so that it goes in but you can already see the plastic is increasing as well so it's already up to 50 uh, 58 000, so it's already ready to take the next plastic train in and that means for example, this one, this is the plastic train. This one is stuck here and just goes like, I can't go into the next station because the next station is not open yet. It will open once the coal tra station or the coal train is done unloading, then we can see that the next plastic train comes out. So it's super complicated. It works at all tiers. You can see all this. And I've decided so that the start of this, the process is, uh, is over stack all the way through so that trains will at their when they're idle they will actually reach a steady state and then of course what we want to do is for example this one we now got a 
copper train inbound, then we might say, you know what? Why are we not having copper trains in here? Is that does that mean that we are not getting them fast enough? We have these train stations. This has been covered in a previous uh, episode. You can see the trains coming in here. Then they're going to unload on the first eight and then moving forward. So as I present this, I feel that it's uh, it's it is definitely a different way of building building factory bases than what I have seen pretty much anywhere else. I know that there's been some that I am not the first one to do this, but if I look at it, this doesn't look like your typical factorial base. The typical factorial base looks more like uh, this mess that I have back here. That's my starter base. That's only doing one thing. And that is uh, making a bit of only doing one thing. And then I mentioned two things, do two things doing our bit of research very, very slowly, but also primarily module. I have 87,000 modules and 34,000 modules and then a bit of power over here as well, fueling, fueling the entire base. Cool. So I think that that basically summarizes my overcomplicated train system in order to build the blue signs for my true mega base. It is fully functional, pretty advanced, and I've had some really big, um, big errors and they've been really fun to de debug but once it's running it's it's running it's running pretty damn good and this one is plastic okay so this one's waiting for the plastic to be unloaded when is the plastic unloaded or when is plastic done this is only at 24 so that's going to take a while here we have green circuits that's the same thing and uh, yeah basically so the question is Am I going to see you on Twitch to be part of the design and, and debugging process for this base? Of course I am. And uh, just remember again, it's on Twitch TV slash Nilaus and it's on Tuesday, Thursdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central European time. And the second question is, do you want to see masterclasses on uh, this kind of way so that you can get started on uh, this weird and yeah, that's just weird. Let's also say optimal, optimal, eh, if effective way of building bases in the future. So if you're, if you love trains, this is definitely the way to do it. Maybe, maybe build a better way of doing stackers and such that, but you know, there's room for optimization anyway. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, showcase of my true mega base progress and that you want to, uh, that you feel in inspired maybe to do, try something yourself or uh, inspired to come uh, take a look at our, at our, Twitch streams. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, take care. And as always, stay effective.